Hi, welcome to my Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Chetan Parkin. I like to do a little talk on human design every week on Thursdays. And uh, today I'm going to talk about projectors. So in human design, uh, for those of you that are familiar with human design, we know there are five different types. Five different types in which energy gets to move through people. So they're very distinguishable from each other. So we have the manifestors, we have the generators, we have the manifesting generators, we have the reflectors, and we've also got the projectors. And each of them operate in a very, very different way in the world. So today I'm going to talk about the half-truths that somehow inhibit projectors from being totally um, able to live their life to the fullest. Because a lot of what's been put about around projectors is they have to wait for an invitation. They have to wait to be recognized and invited and called into something. And that's only half a truth. It's only half the possibility. So let's go and see what are the various numbers around these different types. So we know manifestors make up about 11% of the world's population. Between generators and manifesting generators, they make up almost 70% of the world's population. So we might say, you know, these are all energy types I'm talking about. And particularly the generators and manifesting generators, it's almost like the, they're running the world. It's like the world runs because they're constantly moving this energy. And anybody who's not a generator or a manifesting generator can very easily get swept up into the, that way of doing things as though it was their own. And of course, anyone that's a projector knows this is really a very difficult situation, getting caught up in running on other people's energies. And particularly, we run into things that really don't work for us. So the, the most important thing to, for any projector to realize is we're not a generator, we're not a manifesting generator, we're not a manifester. Does that mean to say we can't manifest? Far from it. We have to produce the right circumstances for that. In actual fact, it turns out that projectors are the natural guides for this world. That's what we do. And yes, I include myself. I'm a projector by design. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm a guide. And I have been right from the very get-go in this lifetime. As to whether anyone pays attention to what I'm saying or not, that's another matter. But let's see what happens. Why do we call projectors projectors? Because what we do is we project out what it is we've got defined in our design. As much as what we have defined, we also put out what we don't have defined as well. So for all projectors, we have to know our designs better than anybody. Generators and manifesting generators, we know a gut response. OK, good to go. Interesting, not interesting. Just the gut response, that movement of internal energy tells you whether to proceed. Projectors, very different. We have to actually know what it is we're projecting out. So, for example, we have to know what centers are defined in our chart, what centers are turned on and running energy all the time. Where do we give our guidance from? And we have to know very well about our undefined centers and particularly the undefined sacral center, you know, and not to just keep running energy from that center as though we had it turned on all the time. So projectors, the absolute first thing is know your design, know which centers you have defined, know which centers you have undefined. Be very, very clear about that. The defined centers are how you operate in life consistently. The undefined centers, where you provide your wisdom into the world, where you give your guidance into the world. OK, so knowing your design is an absolute must. So here we are. We project out our design as projectors. We put out these various channels, these defined centers that we have. And we also hold that space where the, the centers that are undefined are also a part of our makeup that we are projecting out to the world. What happens when you project something out? Certain people are attracted. So all projectors have to recognize the people around you, the situations around you, the environments, the opportunities, all of these things. You're actually drawing them to you. They're being drawn to what it is you're projecting out. And so you might say, OK, well, I'll just wait for the right opportunity and see, you know, maybe whoever gets drawn around me is going to invite me or draw me into something. And that's only half the story. The other half is to recognize the people, environment, situations, things that come to your attention because you know your design so well. 
the invitation can work two ways. They're around these opportunities, these people around you. You can also, if you're really clear about your design, you can make the invitation, you can make the contact, you can make the connection. Well, fancy seeing you here. Look, I've got something that might be able to be enhancing your life a little bit if I give you my guidance. So it's a two-way invitation. The difficulty for projectors is when we get caught up in, well, we've got to do it like everybody else does. And we're not clear about our design. We're not clear about the specific ways in which we go about things because we don't know. We're not clear about our nature, our defined centers, our undefined centers, and we're not clear in that area. So you put out an invitation and you see, okay, is it attracting anything? Is, am I getting any feedback here? Am I seeing that the people I'm engaging with are actually relating to what it is I'm putting out? And of course, we're paying attention to our authority as well. We're paying attention to where we get our clarity. And so it's a little bit like going fishing. You know, a fisherman can, can throw out a line with bait on the end of it. You know, like a projector, we project out our aura in a way what we've got to offer in the world here. And you can either sit there and, you know, if you're on a riverside, you can watch the line get swept downstream. If you're in a still place, you can watch the float on the water or you can be very sensitive on the line, feeling if there's any activity there. And, you know, you can just sit there forever. You can sit there morning, noon and night and nothing happens. Or you can see, well, it, you know, maybe I should change places a little bit. Maybe I should cast my line in a different direction. You know, and again, according to our own nature, our own gifts, our own defined and undefined centers. So are there very effective projectors in the world? Absolutely there are. And you can see, you know, this is their process. For example, Steven Spielberg, you know, probably the most successful movie maker of all time. Uh, Michael Jackson, you know, how did he do it? He was a projector. Uh, Barack Obama, Sheryl Crow, uh, Goldie Horn, uh, Claire Daniels, Claire Danes, uh, JFK. You know, these are all very, very powerful projectors. And they didn't sit around waiting for things to happen to them. They were very, they are very active in their life. And it's just about seeing it's a two-way flow for all projectors. So anyone that's ever told you, hey, you've just got to sit down and wait until you get an invitation, that's only part of the story. The other part is to recognize what is it, who are the people, who are the situations I'm drawing to me, what are the potential connections there? So in the end, it all comes back to us. Where are we going to cast our line? And if it doesn't work in one place, can we cast it in another one? And we're doing it according to our own gifts and talents. That's the trick. So that's what I have to share with you today. I hope this has been a little informative and given all projectors encouragement. And for all you other types, be aware, projectors can provide tremendous guidance. See you next time. Bye for now.